that his presence dwells in us 24 7. Just to know that we are never without him. Just to know that God made a promise that he would never leave us again. Never forsake us. Thank God for sending the Holy Spirit to dwell in us in the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are blessed people tonight, not because we live so holy, it's because of what God has done for us on that cross in Christ Jesus. We are also people tonight because of what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God tonight. We are so grateful to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, tonight I'm teaching on, well, not me, God the Father, God the Son. And God, the Holy Spirit, because he said, I be it. When the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to teach you all. So I always rely on the Holy Spirit to do the teaching. Because without the Holy Spirit, I'm completely lost. But with the Holy Spirit, I am more than a conqueror standing up here. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Tonight I'm teaching on the devil is defeated. Newsflash. Don't think in case you forgot. The devil is still defeated. And spiritual warfare, we're still talking about spiritual warfare, is enforcing the victory Christ won for the church on the cross. And uh, when God said to me uh, last week, he said, stop fighting to gain the victory. Because you are losing every time because the victory has already been won. But you go through all of these changes in the name of Jesus, kind of found, trying to do all this to gain the victory over the devil when the victory has already been won. You see, but then uh, why we have to uh, deal with the enemy? We only deal with the devil that's in the unsaved. The devil is the, really is not the church problem. The church was given the power in the name of Jesus to cast demon out of the unsaved. How can it be when God said he, he in Colossians 2 15, you don't have to turn it there. When God said he's full of principality and power, he stripped Satan off his power. So he stripped Satan off his power, and the Bible said in Colossians 2 verse, that's in verse 9 and 10, it says, as Colossians said, in him we are complete. And Jesus Christ is the head of all principality and power. And the Bible said, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And in him we are complete, which means that if we complete in Christ, we are far above all principality and power because we have been raised up together. God made us set together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. You have to see yourself there. You have to see yourself more above all principality and power because we are poor. And the devil is really, truly, is not a Christian, not the Christian problem. There's not a devil that we have to fight for ourselves. We pulled out strongholds in other people's lives, but I'm a, but for you I finished tonight, you're gonna to see how the devil been tricking you and using your own words against you. That's what we think the devil has some power. But I'm going to show you tonight how the devil is getting power and where he's getting it from. Let me know where he's getting it from so uh, I can come. <laughs> Close that door up. Get that turkey no more power. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus was, was highly exalted. Was highly exalted by God. Highly exalted. But everything that that name needs to, to, to give the church 
to enforce the victory that Christ has won for the church. And the Bible says, God highly exalted Jesus' name. And it gave that name, that exalted name, to the church to enforce the victory that Christ won for the church. Now, the church victory is in the reality of Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Spirit. What God has done for us. You have to visualize that. See him on the cross. See him conquering the victory for us in Christ Jesus. Now, get down to the good part. Satan defeat at the cross can never, 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 but never be overturned. He is defeated forever. You saw Jimmy Christmas. I thought he was still in charge the way he's ruling my life. <laughs> no. Satan defeat at the cross can never be overturned. Never. He is defeated. He is defeated. His defeat can never be overturned. He has no power. He is powerless to a Christian, but not to the unsaved. When God called us out of darkness, he called us and brought us out of the market of Satan. He was a slave to yeah. Satan. The blood of Jesus Christ paid for our, our release. And the Bible said he, the mercy and grace called us out of darkness. And it translated us into a place that we never been before. That place is called heavenly places. Then in one translation it said, and he translated us into the kingdom of his damn son. In the eyes of God, the church is seated in the kingdom of his damn son. God does not see the church defeated. He sees the church raised up above all principality and power. When God look at the church, he see the blood. Amen. And he see what he has done for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. God never see our dirty work because he would kill us. Hallelujah. He viewed us through the eyes of Jesus yes. Christ and what he has done for us on the cross. Amen. He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. We deserve to live under the curse of the law. But because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, he prayed, he sacrificed his life once and for all to redeem us so that we can be free, so that we can live a free life, so that we can be busy about the Father's business. We are free people. We are the people of God called by his name. We are free people. God prayed a dear price to redeem us. Yes. And we have a perfect redemption. Yes. Nothing missing and nothing like it. But we're going to get to the point how the devil is so successful, successful in stealing the church power. Mm -hmm. And God said he was a what? A thief, right? Yes. What does a thief do? Yes. Steal, right? Yes. What does a killer do? Murder. Kill. What, uh, what does a destroyer do? Destroy. Now, what this killer, oh, killer, this killer, the Bible, you know what you said? The killer, what's the matter with Anyway, guys, the killer needs some power in order to kill you. Amen. He had to have some power. The killer realized that God, through Jesus Christ, has stripped him of all his power. But in order for the thief to steal something, he needs some power. In order for the, 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 the destroyer to destroy God's people, he needs some power. He had to have some power. 
Why? Because remember, God stripped him off his power. And on the third day, God rose up and said that all power, all power. in heaven and earth, Philippians 2 and 10 said, and under the earth has been given unto Jesus, has been invested in the name of Jesus. Then Jesus said in Mark 16 and 17, he said, now in my name you can do wonderful things. In my name you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name you can cast out the devil with no problem. In my name you can, you can uh, uh, pull down principality and power with no problem. In my name you can pull down stronghold. But if you forget to mention my name and try to go on your own, they are going to attack you because you are out of order. Because the Bible said, do all things in the name of Jesus to the glory of God. And when we go before God or we, we disuse the word, we are out of order. And the devil said, that's no power there. We know a lot of word, but with the word, we just use the word. The Bible says in the name of Jesus, everything that we do, every word that we recite to, to the devil, to ourselves, we should always start it out in the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus made it possible for us to live a victorious life. And you know, we, we, we tend to, I guess it's just this my thinking. A lot of times when we pray, we put Jesus at the end. You said that I asked all these, I guess nothing wrong to say it, you know. Said that I asked all these things in Jesus' name. What's wrong with getting his attention first? What's wrong with approaching God the way that he should approach them? And what Jesus said, Jesus said, in my name, God will move for you. In my name, ask what you will and the Father will give it to you. But you mention my name, that's the key to the open door. Use my name, not use my name, lad, but go with my name first. So see, when you say in the name of Jesus, God recognizes something here. Amen. But he's listening to you. But when you put Jesus' name on the end, it don't say nothing else. You just only got his attention. This is my thinking. But the Bible, then Jesus said, whatsoever you ask me my name, ask me personally, I would do that. But he said, when you approach the Father, <coughs> use my name first. Come on, God. Huh? Because he recognized my name. My name get you, can get you into the place. You know, a lot of times we know people, we go to a certain place, you throw your name around. Why well, could that name be something? It's, oh, yeah. Okay, come right on in. Because the name represents something. I know when my uh, daughter used to go up to Holiday Inn in Ocean City, we've been going up there so often. I like to talk and I got to know everybody there. She said they went there by doing a holiday. It was packed. They said there was no more room. They decided to mention Dr. Betty name. Did you get a room? Yes. They said, oh, okay, we can, we have to. But see, they had to mention the name. And Jesus said, you have to mention my name. You know a lot, but you approached it the phone room. Like he said, let us come bold. Bold is not whining and crying and belly aching. Bold is mean that you have a right to be that. Not because you live so holy, because the name opened up the door and given you that right to be that. He said, let us come. Come. He didn't say, wait till you get your life right. He said, come on, because you need some mercy and grace to help you tomorrow. Come on, God. So you calm down. That's why we say that song, just as I am. Don't have no plea, but that his blood was shed for you. The name of Jesus is an awesome name. It's a glorious name. It's a powerful name. In this book of Psalms, they said, oh, Lord. My God, how excellent is that name. In all of the earth, your name is to be praised. Your name 
is to be exalted, Lord. And one of I read one of it, so the psalm it says, "Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name. Why? Because the name can get you through. He said it's in that name. It's that name. That's the only name that heaven, earth, and under the earth recognize. It's that name of Jesus." He said, add that name, every name shall bow. Before it's all over, every person upon the face of this earth, one day, are going to bow their knees to the, to the name of Jesus and confess all right. wow. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why are they going to do this? God said they're going to do this to the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. For all what he has done. Yeah. One day. One day. It's a promise that God made his son. For what all you done to redeem the world. One day. Every tongue going to come. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And he said, I'm going to make them do this to the glory of God. Amen. To confess that he is Lord. Thank God. We sing that song. To the glory of the Father, we declare. <laughs> we declare. Yes. We declare that you are Lord. Yes. To the glory of the Father. So we're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Um, Hebrew 2.14. Satan's defeat at the cross can never be overturned. But Lord knows. You're going to see as we continue teaching. How the devil is a good thief. <laughs> One of them could be. Amen. Okay. It was 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. That is who? The devil. That is, did he die? He said that through death, he might destroy him, destroy his power, to leave him powerless through death. He might destroy him. And you notice God named who he had to destroy? He said the devil. But see, under the old covenant, uh, the devil was in full control over people's lives. They did not have no choice. But after the cross, the devil could no longer control a Christian or have dominion over a Christian or make a slave out of a Christian because he was powerless. And the devil need power to carry out his commandment, carry out his order in our life. He needs some power. So he said, I wonder where you're going to get all this power from. Okay. <laughs> Let's read verse 15. Verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All their life was enslaved. And you know, even to this day, a lot of Christians are still afraid of the devil. You don't want to talk much about the devil. Oh, oh, you don't want to say too much about him. Don't get him upset. That's fear. He make a slave out of us. When we see him as still having power. Not understanding where you getting all this power from. Okay. He said, let me know. And the Bible said, and he set liberty, at liberty, those who live their life as a slave to the devil. Devil putting sickness on me. It, how can a defeated devil that can never 
being overturned, turned, put sickness on folks. Amen. The devil made me sick. No, you made yourself sick for not taking care of your body. Amen. The devil joined in because you giving him power. Okay, this. If the devil, I said last week, if the devil could make us sick, we would never show up for a single service. The whole church would be sick every Sunday. Come on, Doc. But we tend to think, instead of putting the brain with the brain lies, I made myself sick. Amen. I refuse to walk. I refuse to drink water. And 99% of our body run off water. Mm. I drink sodas all the time. And I drink, put all this caffeine in my body and don't drink enough water to wash it away. And therefore it runs up my butt up and down at night and I think there's something wrong with me because all I do is drink all this caffeine and it's set. Mm. Caffeine is for people that gonna do some running. <laughs> Not some setting. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. Do you at night and you feel a little tingling going up and down your leg? You wonder what it is. That's that caffeine kind of getting up legs and running. I'm telling you. If okay, the next time it happens, I don't and don't dare you to get up and just start doing some running in place and sit on it, go away. Because the caffeine is trapped in your body. You've been drinking more caffeine than water. And that's how a lot of people mess up their body. The body was not designed to drink all these things that we've been drinking. It was designed to drink water. All right. The doctor would tell you that. The doctor would tell you we need to drink at least eight, eight glasses of water a day. Some people only drink not even a half a gallon, I mean a half a um, glass of water. Why? The devil will tell you this. Now I'm going to tell you, I, I, right, the devil is going to come and put thoughts in your head. He used your thought against you. And he would tell you, I don't like water. I don't like the taste of it. And that's how um, this, help me Jesus, I was saying the right thing up here. Um, <laughs> tell you, he make you not like the thing that are good for you. Mm, all right. You take it, you like sodas, which they know that keep drinking all these sodas, they will mess your kitten up, but that's what you like, because that's what he wants you to like. Mm. And you said, uh -uh, you know, I don't drink that much water. Well, the Bible said, I mean, well, we know that your kidneys need water to function and send, and send water through the upper part of your body to wash out I, all that food that you eat and all that uh, other stuff to wash toxins out of your body. But you see, you know, this somehow or another, you know, I just don't care much for water. That was a good. Keep on. And you're going to make yourself sick. He said, guess who's going to get your credit? You're going to put it on me. Because you think that I still have that much power to make you sick. Mm. Let's think about it. All the time, we are making ourselves sick. And putting it on the devil. Get off of me, devil. The devil said, um, <laughs> help me, Jesus. How did I get that kind of authority to lower myself over you? The temple of God and the spirit of God dwelling in you and you have filled with the Holy Spirit. You're always taking the word and you will tell me you don't get believe God power about faith to believe that I am controlling you. Why are you always fighting me? And you have the victory. See, I know it. But you are your action dictate to me that you do not know it because you continue fighting to gain the victory. You always think that you have to do something to have the victory over the devil. Why would God Almighty leave us helpless a demon and tell us to live a victorious life. Wow. Come on, dog. And tell us to live a abundant life. Uh -huh. And the devil could come in, kick our door in, 
anytime he felt like it and do what he wanted to us. And we just had to stand there and take it. Wide and belly ache what the devil's doing. That we, the devil's so slick, so cunning, slimy. He'll make you say out of your own mouth. We're going to get to that. Mm -hmm. The devil is busy, you know. You ever thought to yourself, can't the Holy Spirit be busy sometimes? Yeah. Very few people I heard, honest to goodness, come and tell me, the Lord is busy saving and healing and delivering people and setting people free. You know the devil is busy. Busy? How you getting all this business? 